brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, I don't know what this world is coming to. Hey yo, check this out, this is Flavor Flav, and if you want the whole truth, and nothing but the whole truth, so help the whole truth. Hey yo, you better listen to Dante, baby. Dante! What's going on guys, and welcome to another great edition of the Dante's Boxing Nation show. I am your host, Dante, and we are back. It's fight week. Sergey Kovalev versus Andre Ward, and it's about to go down, man. This is the battle of supremacy, pound for pound supremacy. So after this week, there will be no more debating on who the best fighter is and all that kind of stuff. All right, so first things first, let me go ahead and introduce the panel as I always do. We're gonna have a couple of people calling in and everything, but let me, right now, I got my man on the line, my man E. King, E. King Fight News. Go ahead and subscribe to his channel if you haven't already did it. What's going on, E. King? Yeah, yeah. What up, Dante? It's Thanks going to... for that intro, yo. Everyone, stay tuned, guys. It's gonna be a great show. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, as you guys can see, we have um the number you guys can call in. But we're gonna try to take some calls in a little bit. All right, we'll try to take some calls and um answer as many as we can. But I want to make sure we get uh, you know keep things pushing. So just go ahead and call that number you see right there on the right side of your screen, right there. All right. So uh, with no further ado. Let's get into it, y'all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So anyway, so E. King, man, the first thing I want to talk about is this um, Manny Pacquiao pay-per-view numbers, man. Everyone's talking about the pay-per-view numbers right now. Uh, it's 300,000. At least that's what Bob yeah. Aram is reporting. What was your reaction to the um, numbers, that's and did right. you think the numbers were going to be what they were, E. King? Uh, if, 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 if I'm not mistaken... Pacquiao versus Bradley did about the same uh, as an HBO pay-per-view. So, actually, I wasn't expecting anything special. Uh, you know, Jesse Vargas was, he's, he's not, a, you know, an all-star kind of guy. He's, he's not the, he didn't get any major victories. He beat Saddam Ali. Mm -hmm. That was his, uh, you know, that's what got him the fight, right? And Saddam Ali was a prospect. Yeah, you know, prospect contender, you know, number one contender kind of a guy. And, um, you know, Jesse Vargas was known for losing to Tim Bradley before that. Right? So, um, you know, he did have an, uh, a great 12th round that got him some, some luster back. And, and the Saddam Ali victory was impressive. He did look a lot bigger, showed a lot more power and, and did show, and, and, you know, it, I thought it would be a more competitive fight, Manny Pacquiao. Uh, Rocket left hand in that second round, mm -hmm. I believe. Just took Vargas out of the fight with his power. And, you know, he, he got hit too. You know, Pacquiao got hit, but, but you know, this, this stage of Manny Pacquiao is really, uh, he's sort of uh, adapted to his age. You know, he knows he's not that huge volume guy anymore. So... Um, you give him credit for, for adjusting, uh, l like any other great fighter. He, he, um, he started throwing that right hook in the middle of the, in the middle of the fight that, that was landing against Vargas. And, uh, you know, he did it just well and, and give him credit Close fight, but, but Pacquiao did win pretty decisively. And, um, the, the numbers don't surprise me. You know, it was, it was a top rank, um, card. Uh, Bob Arum decided not to take HBO. Um, well, he he accepted the fact that HBO let let the fight go, and he was like, "Fuck it, I'm doing my own pay per view." Uh -huh. And the, the numbers were what they were. He even admitted it was a single or a double. It wasn't a home run. So yeah, and he knows um, that that the numbers weren't great. Yeah, I mean, you know, of course he's trying to, you know, tell people that the numbers were magnificent, you know, but that's of course what um he does, you know, Bob Arum. But I mean, it, it's common sense. Bob Arum was the main person that was saying these numbers were going to be better than the Bradley numbers because now Manny Pacquiao is fighting against a Mexican fighter. And this is what I said on the show. What's that? Just to compare, uh, do you recall what Canelo versus Khan did? Was that like five hundred? Yeah, it was around. I think it was around five hundred thousand. 
I think it was around, and I know, yeah. I know Canelo Cotto. I know that was like about what eight hundred, nine hundred, or yeah, something that was, like that. Yeah, yeah, that was. Yeah. I, I mean, well, you, you really need to have a, a dynamic between both fighters. You can't have one guy that's semi unknown, and then, and then a Manny Pacquiao. That, yeah. that's, that's not gonna, uh, you know, light the world on fire, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, but once again, you know, one thing it does just prove, though, is it just proves that everything that Floyd Mayweather said when he was saying, you know, I'm going to give you this $40 million because you're not worth the money I'm worth, you know, he was right. And and that's really what it comes down to. That's really what it comes down Absolutely. to. So, I mean, 300 And, and you know what? Because he's Manny Pacquiao, um, he still has enough of a following to to make money on pay-per-view. It's not like he's going back down to HBO. Mm -hmm. he's proven to be above that. And, you know, look at a case like Triple G, who had a pay-per-view once upon a time, and mm -hmm. <laughs> that bombed completely. Yeah. So, you know, there's, there's a huge difference in star power Yeah. if you're looking at um, a guy like Manny Pacquiao uh, going forward. And, and it's all about matchmaking. If you, if you put him in there against a guy like an Adrian Bronner, there's going to be a lot more hype behind that fight because... He's in there with Adrian Broder, right? <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. And we already know, man. We already know. If Pacquiao would have been fighting Adrian Broner, like you just basically referenced to, the pay-per-view numbers would have been yeah. way better. They would have been way better because... I believe, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. Broner, he would have sure. sold... He's got a huge follow-up. Yeah, yeah. Broner, he would have sold the fight. He would have been talking a lot of shit. It would have been, you know, the fight would have basically been billed as Pacquiao versus Floyd Mayweather's little brother. And now, you know, if he beats Broner, now Floyd Mayweather wants to come out of retirement, you know, to avenge his little brother's loss or whatever the case may be. On top of that, you yeah. know, the bullshit excuses that Manny Pacquiao was using. So, you know, that would have been a much bigger fight. But then again, I mean, let's be realistic, E. King. Almost anybody would have probably, I won't say almost anyone, but Pacquiao versus Danny Garcia versus um, uh, Terrence Crawford, Broner, we know that know. those would have been much bigger fights. We know that. But it was Manny Pacquiao I, who decided to pick Vargas because he thought Vargas was going to be the easiest opponent to beat out of all of those guys. I mean, what do, do, what do you think about that, E. King? Do you think that, that Vargas is the easiest out of all those opponents or what? I mean, you know, he, he, he picked the guy that – you know, after he beat Bradley, he beat the guy. He picked the guy that lost to Bradley. Uh huh. <laughs> he, he he didn't pick the he didn't pick the number one guy at 140, which was which was the guy, Terrence Crawford. Bob Arum literally, literally had to um, say, "Hold on, maybe it's not Jesse Vargas. I'm going to go talk to Terrence Crawford." And, you know, he, he, in the middle of making the, the the Jesse Vargas fight, he had to try and hold out hope. That Pacquiao would change his mind mm -hmm. and, and, and maybe pick Terrence Crawford. So, so there was a big uh, uh, demand on, from the top rank end to see Pacquiao versus Crawford, and and ultimately, Team Pacquiao did not want to go ahead with that fight. But whatever their reasons were, they didn't want to go ahead with that fight. Yeah, and you know, Jesse Vargas. You know, not a notable guy. You know, Pacquiao was coming off of uh, the Mayweather loss. So, you know, it, it's hard to end inactivity. Uh, you know, I, I, I looked at it as a tune-up, to be honest. It was a tune-up fight. It could have been could have been more competitive. I thought Jesse Vargas really looked slow in there compared to Manny Pacquiao, I, especially in the later rounds. It was. I mean, it looked like he has his, his feet in, in mud, actually. <laughs> hmm. No no offense to Jesse Vargas. He's a solid fighter, but... Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it, it is what it is. It's a learning process for Jesse Vargas, but I know it must really be a major setback psychologically. You know, the fact that he lost to Tim Bradley, now he comes back and he loses to Manny Pacquiao. He got his spirits up, like you said, with the Saddam Ali win. But now, yeah. you know, he, he's, he can't be feeling too good about this Manny Pacquiao loss. I mean, I know, you know, he was optimistic about it. He's, you know, he's, he sounded kind of upbeat when he was saying, you know, this is just going to make me better. But, you know, he has to be careful not to be somewhat of a gatekeeper because he already lost right. 
to two of the, the, the biggest names. And, and those are not even the most dangerous welterweights. I mean, you still have the Keith Thurmans, the Errol Spence, you know, even, even Danny Garcia, you know. So you still have some – yeah, you got some lions up there at that welterweight division, man. So anyway, man, let's go ahead and talk about this uh, the fight this weekend, man. So, I mean, you got Ward versus Kovalev. And you know, E-King, what I really like about this fight is, like I said at the beginning of the show – when it comes to this fight right here, the winner of this fight, you know, is going to be pound for pound, undisputed, you know, the best fight in the world. There's no way anyone, there's no way anyone could try to justify someone else. And what's so crazy about that is the fact that when people talk about who's pound for pound the best fighter in the world, how are you going to say the winner of this fight is not when the winner of this fight is actually beating other fighters on the pound for pound list? There's no other fighter. There's no other fighter right now, you know, outside of Mayweather, and he retired already. There's no other fighter that is beating pound for pound champions right now. You know what I mean? So absolutely. And and realistically, who has been number two on that list for the longest time? It was it was Andre Ward. Absolutely. It, it Andre was, Ward. Uh, ever since he won the Super Six, he's been number two on that list. Uh huh. Right. He, he defined himself at 168, beat everyone in front of him, and and yeah, he had he had some promotional issues. You know, he basically took you know a couple fights, like one fight per year, and and now he's back. You know, he's embracing the challenge of the light heavy, heavyweight division, and absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Kovalev beat Kovalev also beat someone on the pound for pound list. Brendan Hopkins even at fifty. Yeah. He's in that top the pound for pound list, and Kovalev did get the job done there. He, he took out the legend, Bernard Hopkins, and um, you know Andre Ward. He beat everyone at one sixty eight. He, he moved up, and now he's got someone that that uh, is is undefeated, right? Undefeated. Yeah. Undefeated, um, I, I think one. I don't know if it's if it's boxing scene or one of those websites, but um, one of them websites they have Sergey Kovalev as pound for pound number one right now. So once again, this is what I'm saying. We already know that if Andre Ward were to beat Sergey Kovalev, of course the excuse is going to come out. You know, don't be surprised. You're going to see articles of people saying, "Oh, it was the most boring fight ever," all because the guy they didn't want to win ended up winning the fight. And that's what it really comes down to. But, um, hey, we're going to go ahead and, um, and take a call. You know, this will be the first call we take on this show live. So um, let's go ahead and open the phone lines. We got um, my man, area code 602, is on the line. What's going on, man? Hey, what's up, Dante? Uh, quick question for you, man. Um, do you believe the, um, the hype that uh, Floyd is um, saying in regards to um, Ward being set up to um, fail or, like, the politics and stuff? Well, absolutely. I mean, well, first of all, what's your name and where you from, man? Oh, my name is Marvin, man. I'm from Phoenix. Okay. Oh, you said Marvin? What up, man? From Phoenix. Okay, Marvin. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, to answer your question, Marv, I mean, we, you know, I was just basically alluding to that right before you called in. I mean, when last time Andre Ward, he faced Alexander Brand, you had Dan Raphael from ESPN. He wrote an article and he titled the article, you know, it was the most boring fight ever on HBO. You know, and before that, he didn't, uh, Dan Raphael, he didn't show up to cover either of Andre Ward's last two fights against Barrera or against um, Alexander Brand. So, yeah, there's no doubt about it um, that, you know, the hate is being transferred over from Floyd Mayweather to Andre Ward. And we, we pretty much, you know, already know what time it is when it comes to that. But at the end of the day, man, I mean, this is about who the best is. You know, all this talking about, fighters you don't like or you don't like their style or whatever, that has nothing to do with who's the best. If you watch the Super Bowl and somebody wins the Super Bowl, you know, three to zero or seven, you know, to zero, no one is going to say, oh, that was a terrible game. They're going to say those are the Super Bowl champions. So, you know, that's really what it comes down to, man. Hey, man, but but thanks for your call, man. I appreciate it, man. Take care, all right? All right, man. All right, so um, that was Mar from Phoenix, man. But um, anyway, uh, let's get back to the to the groove of things. Um, e King, man. So um, once again, 
How do you see this fight playing out? Do you see this fight as as back and forth? You see it looking like the Carl Frotch fight. You see it looking like um, Ward versus um, Dawson or Kovalev versus Chalimba. How does the fight play out? Great question, Dante. That, that's, a, that's a money question. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, l- looking back at Ward's fights, it, it, it would be hard to compare to something... Uh, to, to one of his fights at 168 because uh, obviously the weight's an issue. He's moving up here, um, although he's acclimated himself to 175 pounds. This is, this is probably the strongest opponent he's faced. This is Crusher Kovalev. This is a guy that has a, a huge knockout rating. And and we have to see if Andre Ward can neutralize that mm-hmm. and how he's going to be able to take his punch. Um, I... There, there's been no doubt that Andre Ward has a solid chin. Yeah. So, in terms of how he reacts to, to that will be interesting. I, I don't see him any, having any major issues there. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this fight is all about uh, distance. Yeah. I think it's all about real estate in terms of uh, where Andre Ward is, is going to dictate the pace of the fight or is Kovalev going to be able to get the space he needs to uh, to keep Ward on the outside. I don't see Kovalev as a great inside fighter. I see him, uh, you know, doing pushing off on the inside just to get a good long, long shot, like a long right hand or a, or a sneaky left hook in there. But I think Andre Ward's a superior inside fighter, and and um, on the outside it's about 50-50. Mm-hmm. So it's all about Andre Ward dictating the pace, and I. I can see the majority of this fight being on the inside, and it could be really dirty. There's a lot of variables in this fight, and I think that's why it's uh, pretty much uh, an even fight when it comes to uh, the, the betting odds. Mm-hmm. Andre Ward, then actually, he's actually a slight favorite, a very slight favorite going into this fight. And um, ultimately, uh, it's hard to go against Andre Ward by decision. It, it's really hard, you know. Uh, I think mm. Floyd Mayweather believed they could rob him. Uh, but Floyd Mayweather was, has been in this situation before. When he fought Oscar De La Hoya, he almost got robbed. Yeah. But he did walk away with a victory. He, even <laughs> one of, you know what? He, he almost got robbed in the Canelo fight by one of the judges. <laughs> you know? So. Yeah, but that would have been, been something really terrible. <laughs> yeah. But, but Oscar De La Hoya, I'm sure if De La Hoya won that fight, there would be a lot of people just, just rolling with it. Yeah, but the Canelo was, was that was way off. That was exactly. That was, I mean, and once again, like like you just basically, you know, um, touched on. I mean, it really comes down to how Sergey Kovalev responds to getting hurt bad. I mean, because I feel in that first Pascal fight, I feel that that Kovalev he looked a little uncomfortable in that fight. You know, um, Sergey Kovalev he did a great job of um, taking away. Um, Pascal's inside game in a rematch. And Pascal, he was fighting from the outside. You know, he was way shorter than Kovalev. And Kovalev did the smart thing. He took advantage of his long arms, and he kept him at the end of his punches. But once Pascal got on the inside in that first fight, it looked like he kind of hurt Kovalev just a little bit. But credit to Kovalev, he did rally back in that fight, you know, even though he he looked like he was hurt a couple times. But Andre Ward is a complete different animal because Andre Ward – He'll get on the inside, and like you said, it may look like a rough and tumble type of fight, but what people don't realize is when Ward is on the inside, he's doing some serious work, and he's breaking you down. You know, when he's hitting you with them up close, you know, in close, in the trenches type of punches, he's hurting you bad, you know? So he's broke down a lot of fighters like that, mentally and physically. So it'll be really interesting to see how Sergey Kovalev deals with the inside fighting. Because I don't think Kovalev is that comfortable on the inside. So, but at the same time, Andre Ward is going to have to worry about, you know, getting away from that right hand, which I'm sure he's been training, you know, to avoid it the whole night. But, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we see knockdowns in this fight. I wouldn't be surprised if yeah. we see knockdowns in this fight. Uh, you know, no one really believes the fight is going to end in a knockout. But you never really know, man. When you have fighters this crafty, once again, you don't have to have all the power in the world to knock somebody out. You know, I mean, you just have to catch them with a shot that they don't really see. You feel me? Yeah. So I, I can't yeah. wait. Yeah, but he can't. Yeah, I, I can't wait, though, man. This is 
this reminds me of, of fights like, you know, like when Roy Jones fought against uh, Bernard Hopkins the first time when nobody, you know, a lot of boxing fans didn't really know, at least, you know, only the diehard boxing fans knew who they were. But, you know, the, yeah. the boxing world didn't really know who they were at the time. But that was a huge fight. And that's kind of how this is. You know, the first time Andre Ward is fighting in Las Vegas, which which is big. You know, if, if once again, if he wins this fight, you know, this definitely catapults his career. Same thing for Sergey yeah, Kovalev, yeah. you know. The, the fight's on pay-per-view, yeah? Yeah, the fight is on pay-per-view, man. It's on pay-per-view. Yeah, that would be real interesting. That would be real interesting because uh, – HBO turned down Manny Pacquiao to take this fight. Yeah, that's that's true. And and but you yeah. know what? But you know what, E, um, I don't feel there's that much pressure on, you know, Ward and Kovalev to generate big numbers because this so, is the this is their first time on yeah. pay-per-view. I mean, me personally, I think the fight should have been on HBO, just like the Crawford versus Postal fight. You know, I, I think it should have been on regular HBO, but you got to start somewhere, I guess, when it comes to pay-per-view. So I tell you right now, if they do, me personally, I feel with this being their first pay-per-view fight and neither one of them are stars at all, if this fight even does 300000 I think that would be a huge success for their first pay-per-view. I mean, what do you think? What do you think yeah, the numbers absolutely. might be, uh, E.K.? No, yeah, if, if, they, if they literally match Manny Pacquiao's number, that, that shows you that, both of these guys um, have a following combined. And, um, you know, Andre Ward, he gold medalist, you know, he's, 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 he's known huge in, in uh, California, uh -huh. right? Oakland. That, that's where he's a big draw. And Sergey Kovalev, you know, he's, uh, I don't know if he, uh, he's from Russia. So he, but he's, he's made his name. Knocking guys, knocking Americans out, basically. Uh -huh. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, and he's got he's got a lot of hype behind him. You know, HBO has been you know plugging his fights. He, he, it doesn't matter who they were against; he's been plugging their fights. And I'm sure a lot of people see uh, Copeland coming up and and have built him up to to be the guy that, that takes out on their work for sure. Uh -huh. uh, a lot of people picking Kovalev. Uh, a lot of people are on both sides of the fence here, and I think um, I think this is going to be a, a very it's going to be like an ultra chess match. And, and just, I, I think I think the Bernard Hopkins fight is 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 so interesting because Hopkins is a master on, on the inside mm -hmm. and just just super crafty. And Kovalev was able to deal with with Hopkins, but he did hurt him early. That's a good point. Right? So he, but, and, and, and you know I what? I was just going to say that. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, if, if Andre Ward can, uh, obviously Andre Ward, he's almost like a younger version of Hopkins. Uh -huh. Younger, just as intelligent, and and uh, he's he, he sort of taken bits and pieces of his style and incorporated it. And he really reminds me of the Hopkins that fought Felix Trinidad. That's what Andre Ward reminds me. Of. Yeah, and I don't. And there's, there's not too many guys that can compare to that skill level. And and you know what? I I, I at this stage, I, I I just like Andre Ward in the fight. I think he wins the decision. And I think uh, he, he knows how to win rounds, and he knows how to score clear points. And Kovalev needs to be on his A game. He needs to be on his absolute. A game to, to really, and he needs to hurt Andre Ward. He's got to freaking sell out and uh, just try and befuddle him, try and frustrate him. And it, it's going to be a total chess match. It, this has a lot on the line. Yeah. Uh, it's just all, all the makings of a great fight right here. Yeah. And, and I'll say this um, we got some calls um, lined up right now. We're going to take another call in a minute. But before I take the next call, um, what I do want to say in response to what you said, uh, you made a good point, you know, when you compared. Uh, Andre Ward to Bernard Hopkins. We all know their style is very similar. But what I noticed in the in the Kovalev versus Hopkins fight is weird because yeah, usually Hopkins he works on the inside. But when Hopkins actually fought against yeah. Kovalev, it was the it was the contrary. He didn't really fight on the inside. He kind of tried to stay away from Kovalev. And matter of fact, Kovalev did the same thing. Kovalev, you know, he he would basically cut off the ring. He would put a lot of pressure on um, Hopkins, but when he got close to him, he would catch him with them long shots 
And then, you know, Hopkins would try to avoid them. And when Hopkins tried to counter, Kovalev was smart enough to take a jump back and he would be out of distance for um, Bernard Hopkins to even touch him. So in that fight, Hopkins, he really didn't work on the inside or he didn't even really try to work on the inside like he usually does. He didn't really try to That's smother right. him as much. But I believe I I believe, yep. I believe, when it comes to Andre Ward, he'll be a lot more successful when it comes to getting on the inside and smothering him. But who knows? Maybe Kovalev, you know, he can um, keep him at a distance and make it hard or make Andre Ward pay trying to get on the inside. But anyway, um, we're going to try to take another call real quick. Um, we, got, um, we got my man, um, area code uh, 516 is on the line. What's going on, man? Yeah, what's up, man? All right, big we're fan of your show, man. Even though I don't agree with everything you say, man, but I'm a big fan, definitely. Hey, I appreciate it. Where you calling from, man? From New York, man. That's what it is. Hey, hey man, there's nothing wrong with disagreeing. You know, I mean, me and my mom, we don't always agree with everything. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, of course. So of course, definitely, it, it, it ain't nothing wrong with that. But um, what else is on your mind, man? And what's your name? Uh, my name is Mustafa. Okay. What's on your mind, man? Uh, all right, so quick question, man. What do you think about? Mayweather's legacy, right? He never got to fight a slick black fighter. I would, I would say the only one he ever fought was probably Zab Judah. We know Zab Judah's limits. He's not. He's kind of limited. Where would you put him? Because see, that's the problem with Mayweather's legacy. He never fought against somebody with that type of skill level. He always fought punchers, people that come forward. Never nobody really skilled. Where would you put him? Let's say in a mythical match with Rigandow or a Laura, or, you know, one of these types of people. Had he have done that, I think, honestly, I think he would have cemented his legacy as probably the best of all time. Well, the problem is we're never going to know because he's never fought somebody with that type of skill level before. Okay, well, the first thing I want to say is, you know, with me being a reporter, it's really great because I get the perspective of all kind of professional boxers who've done this, you know, for, you know, for their whole life, basically. <laughs> Everyone, the majority of people that I actually talk to, before I answer your question, I'm going to give you, you know, what their response would be because I, I got it on camera what they're saying. But the majority of professional boxers from Trinidad to Oscar De La Hoya to Freddie Roach, and, and the list just goes on and on and on, they actually have him rated, you know, a lot of them have him rated. Oscar De La Hoya, you already know, he said he was possibly, you know, the greatest fighter of all time. You had, um, uh, I interviewed Felix Tito Trinidad, and Trinidad told me he was top two, the greatest fighter of all time. And the list just goes on and on and on. Now, when it comes to fighting against black fighters, um, like you, you talked about Zab Judah. When Floyd Mayweather fought against Zab Judah, Floyd Mayweather, uh, Zab Judah, he was very shortly, right before he had lost to um, Carlos Baldemir, he was the unified champion. He was a unified champion right. at the welterweight division. We all know that Zab Judah, he went in there and he gave Floyd Mayweather all kind of fits for the first four rounds. So, I mean, so he fought against That's right. he fought against Zab he, Judah. He, he got an unofficial knockdown there in the fourth round. Yeah. I'll never forget that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, so, so he fought Zab Judah. When he fought Shane Mosley, keep in mind, when he fought Shane Mosley, right before he fought Shane Mosley, Fans were saying that Floyd Mayweather was ducking Shane Mosley. I remember Jim Lampley, you know, he was saying it from HBO. Fans were saying, matter of fact, when Floyd Mayweather went on the radio show with R.A. Rugged Man. Yeah. R.A. Rugged That's Man. Right. Rugged Man. Yeah, yeah. He, right. he, he, cut, he, he cussed him out, and, and R.A. Rugged Man was like, okay, well, I understand you're not going to fight Pacquiao because of the drug situation, but what about Shane Mosley? And everybody in the radio studio, they was like, yeah, that's the fight I want to see. That's the fight I want to see, right? And soon as Floyd Mayweather fought, uh, soon, right after that interview, like months later, the fight was announced that he was fighting against Shane Mosley. Also, when Floyd Mayweather, when Shane Mosley fought against Margarito, Margarito, of course, was the number one welterweight in the world. And I, I vividly remember, which I will play the clip for you guys, but I don't feel like looking it up. But Jim Lampley, he was specifically saying that Shane Mosley is on the verge of beating the number one fighter in the welterweight division. And if he beats Margarito, he becomes the number one fighter in the welterweight division. So he was pound for pound, top 10, top five, one of the best fighters in the world when Floyd Mayweather beat him. If you really think about it, there's no black fighter right now outside of Floyd Mayweather that has a better resume than Shane Mosley when he fought him. 
You know what I mean? And of course, you know, he fought the Chop Chop Corley. But he was old at the time, though. He, he hey, but, so old the time. but the so thing he, is, but if you didn't, well, you know what? Go, go ahead, E. King. I'll let you respond, and then I'll, I'll respond to him being old. Yeah, I was, yeah, was going to say, uh, you know, he fought Zab Judah, and before that, he fought Chop Chop Corley. Chop Chop Corley is a guy that, uh, at the time, he only had uh, two losses. Mm -hmm. And he, he lost a split decision with Zab Judah. That was his first fight and when then, he moved up. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, so, absolutely. So my question, yeah. what I'm saying is to really cement his legacy. You know what I'm saying? Like for him to really be considered the best, I mean, better than Sugar Ray. To be honest, is what I'm saying. Yeah. You know? And, so and once it's cemented, that, it cemented. Let me let me respond. Let me respond. He's had so many fights to cement his legacy. Hey, let me respond to you saying Shane Mosley is old. Let me respond. How many old fighters do you know today that's ranked number one in their entire division and they're considered pound for pound one of the best fighters in the world? How many fighters, what you said? How many fighters do you know today that's considered old or too old, but they're considered number one, the best fighter in their division? There's none. That's my point I'm making right there. Shane Mosley. Right, right, right. Yo, Shane Mosley, he I was rated. I mean, that's like saying that's like saying a football team. If they're considered the number one football, the, the number one seed, right? And then you beat the number one seed and you say, Oh, but that don't really count because the quarterback was old. You know, he had been he had got tackled a gang of times and you know, they're they're not they're number one for a reason. You feel me? Now I could see if 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 you know we was talking about Floyd Mayweather you know, beating guys that weren't even considered ranked. They weren't pound for pound. If he was just beating some Rod Salkas or, you know, somebody like that, some Dominique Wades or something like that, then you could say that. But the, but the point that I'm making is, once again, this is not really so much of a debate because the professional boxers themselves, they're saying the same things. They're, they're, there's a reason why they're saying this. They're not saying this about any fighter. They're only saying this about Floyd Mayweather, you know. But, um, hey, man, but I, I got to get to another call, man. But, hey, go ahead and call back in, bro. I appreciate the yeah, question, and, and we'll catch yeah, up absolutely. with you, all right? All right, thanks for your thanks, call, bro. man. All right, man. So, hey, Dante, um, just to speak on that point, just real quick. Uh-huh. In terms of legacy, there's been uh, a few opponents really attached to Floyd Mayweather's name, but none bigger than Manny Pacquiao throughout his career. Of course, yes. And, and that was probably the biggest legacy fight in terms of the guy to beat Mayweather. You know, it, it was the media and the fans that appointed that to Manny Pacquiao. They didn't appoint that to any other fighter. Uh, you know, everyone wanted to believe that Manny Pacquiao was the guy that can do it. Mm -hmm. And because no other fighter really got that kind of a credit. And, and no other... No other, you know, and Arizona Laurel has never been in a position to fight Mayweather. And, and, and you know He's what? He's never been in that position. And yeah, and E. King, I'm glad you brought up that point. Yeah, you just made an excellent point. Let me just add on to what you just said. How many fighters yeah. can say that they beat a fighter that was considered the best fighter of his uh, of the decade? You know what I mean? The fighter of the decade, an <laughs> eight an eight time yeah. division champion. On top of that. When Floyd Mayweather fought Manny Pacquiao, Manny Pacquiao was number two pound for pound on, on the majority of people's lists. You know what I mean? So you can't Absolutely. really... And, and when Floyd Mayweather retired for a year, Manny Pacquiao took the number one spot. Yeah, yeah. Unanimously. Exactly. On top and then of... And when Floyd Mayweather came back, he beat Marquez, he back to number one. <laughs> that, that's just how it went down. It, that's that's how, it, how it went down. And on top of that... Everybody who did a poll before the Manny Pacquiao Mayweather fight, guess who they picked as the favorite to win the fight? They picked Manny Pacquiao to win the fight. So you can't say Pacquiao was old, he was this. How is he going to be pound for pound number two at the time? How is he going to be favored to beat Floyd Mayweather, but then when he wins, he's old? You see how they try to play these games? It's just, it's just that bullshit, man. But um, anyway, um, hey, let's let's go ahead and just take another call, man. We got um, had a whole bunch of people on here on hold for a while, so I'm, I'm gonna take another call real quick. Um, we got area code eight three two in the building on the phone. What's going on, man? You there? Hello. Yeah, eight three two. What's going on, man? Um, I'm calling y'all by your area code since I don't know your name. 
What's yeah, going my on? Bad, man. My name's Naida. I'm from Houston, Texas, man. Uh, <clears throat> I, uh, going on MMA, and I am just want to say this, my opinion. <clears throat> Conrad Hurst said it best. I'm just using MMA for right now. It's an attribute. And piggybacking by what the previous caller said, the best person that I have, that I believe had the best chance to beat May with it because of his attributes was Oscar De La Hoya. And I might be biased because I'm Mexican-American, but just thinking of attributes alone, reach, height, uh, uh, speed, his sorry, speed, uh, his speed, too. yeah. But that's just my opinion no, on I, that, I agree on that with you. argument right there. I, I, I agree with you when it comes to that. I mean, because if you, if you watch the first six rounds, you could clearly see – you know, um, Oscar De La Hoya, his height, his speed, his boxing pedigree, even his defense, yeah. because a lot of people don't know this, but when Oscar De La Hoya was, you know, when he was coming up and when he was considered pound for pound, you know, he had um, one of the top defenses in the game, you know, so. Um, yeah, that, jab alone, that jab alone was a defensive missile, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, but see, but but the, the problem, and everybody always wondered, why did Oscar stop using his jab? They all say, man, if you would have kept using your jab, you would have won the fight. But you got to understand, the kryptonite to a jab is a beautiful counter right hand, a, a pull counter right hand, you know? So, yeah, and, and you're right. On, on top of that, Oscar De La Hoya was the type of fighter to psychologically fatigue. You know what I mean? He didn't really... He didn't really fatigue. Good point, just, good point. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was more psychological because he did it every time. He looked great. In the first six rounds, and then the second half, all of a sudden he'll just be following and and looking like he's frustrated, looking like he's tired, you know. So you know, because I, I box myself, you know, so I already know, yeah. you know, with anxiety, with 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 all that type of stuff, all these different intangibles, state people throwing punches at you, you know, you you psychologically start to get tired, you know what I mean? So you start breathing, yeah. sucking air more. You know, you got a lot to worry about. You know what I mean? You you trying to you trying to hit somebody before they hit you, and you are getting tired. So it's a lot to it. But but yeah. But going back to your point, I agree with you though. Oscar De La Hoya, no doubt about it. He had the type of style to definitely give Floyd Mayweather, you know, the most problems. But but at the same time, Zab Judah, he showed it as well. Zab because Zab yeah. to me, he Zab to me. You know, when they both came up, when Floyd and Zab both came up. I always looked at them as Spider-Man and Venom. You know what I'm saying? They were pretty much the same type of style. You know, it was just yeah. Zab Judah had a little bit more power, but their style was so similar. So when Floyd was fighting against Zab Judah, it was almost like a mirror match. But Zab is like yeah. Oscar De La Hoya. Zab is like a, you know, he's, he's great when it comes to the first half of the fight, the first four to four six points. rounds. You feel me? So that's the yeah. and that's the difference with Floyd. I think Floyd was actually, I think Floyd was betting on that too. I think Floyd was relying on the <laughs> fact that that uh, your your boy um, Oscar De La Hoya he would slow down. So you know that's that's yeah. what that is, man. Yeah. But uh, one more question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just looking at other fighters that would have gave Floyd a lot of problems. And the guy that Floyd fought. Miguel Cotto. Miguel Cotto gave him similar issues. Yeah. Fernando yeah, Vargas. Uh, Delahoy gave him. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And I would I would have loved to see a young Miguel Cotto in there mm -hmm. against Floyd oh. Mayweather. This, the, the, the guy that, that beat Shane Mosley, right after he beat Shane Mosley, I would have loved to see the Mayweather fight. Yeah, yeah. And that was debatable with that Shane Mosley fight. Yeah. The, 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 you talk, yeah, oh, yeah, the Shane, oh, yeah, the Shane Cotto fight? Oh, that was that was real close. But I give but I give Cotto yeah, credit. That was real close. But I give Cotto credit. How about, how, about, how, about, how about Fernando Vargas against Mayweather? I think that would be a good style matchup for because he was a good counter and he had a lot of heart. He was chinny. But he, he, he always he was always able to like the counter the great fighters like De La Hoya. He gave him fits, he gave Trinidad fits, he gave Mosley fits. I thought he was a real good fighter, just came up real fast. You, you know what, man? And and yeah, shots he out came up too fast. Go ahead, he came. He respond came to that. Fast, respond but, to that. You know, uh, you know, Fernando Vargas, one of my favorite fighters. Agree, uh, yes. You know, you know took, took that heartbreaking loss to Tito Trinidad. And I think that, that loss just took so much. It, it, that that kind of a fight he, he fought against Tito Trinidad. If you haven't seen that fight, go on YouTube and watch the first four rounds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All you do is the first four rounds and you're hooked. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That, that fight was just off the charts. And... And Vargas, you know, against De La Hoya, again, that left hook caught up with him. 
just like it did against Tito Trinidad. And, you know, he did come back um, to beat a couple guys, like, and, but then he lost to, he lost to Mosley as well. Uh, so he, he yeah. really just got tagged with left hooks uh, later on in his career. Uh, he beat Winky Wright early on. And, you know, he, he's a Hall of Famer. What about Winky Wright and Mayweather? Now that right there, a that's a that's now, a real hey, interesting fight. Now, now see, that, that's that's one of the fights like you know, it, it's one of those fantasy matchups because um, yeah, Winky Wright for na- had, had a great, a great job. I think, Winky, I Winky Wright. You, you know what? I, I truly believe Floyd Mayweather. I, I mean, it, it depends on if they're naturally the same size because you know, of course, if Floyd yeah. was if Floyd was in Shane Mosley's situation you know, that would have been a hell of an uphill battle because you've seen Winky, he was putting his hands down. He was letting Shane Mosley hit him because he knew he knew that Shane was too small, you know. So, yeah. but but if they were naturally the same size, I think Floyd Mayweather, Floyd, he says it best. You bang the boxer and you box the banger. And I think if, when, when, if you notice, whenever Floyd fights a boxer, he's far more aggressive. When he fought against Zab Judah, yeah. when he fought against Chop Chop Corley, he was the aggressor. And I think if they were the same size, he would do the same thing with Winky Wright. And for Fernando Vargas, I don't think, I, you know, Fernando Vargas, shouts out to him. You know, um, he, he a good friend, cool guy. But I'm just going to be real because I always speak the truth. I think that um, that would be a terrible matchup style-wise for Fernando Vargas. I, I just think, you know, he didn't have the defense to deal with a Floyd Mayweather. Because, you know, com- by way of contrast, are you comparing him to Oscar De La Hoya? De La Hoya is a far more difficult style for Floyd than Fernando Vargas. You know, when, when Fernando Vargas fought against the Ike Cortez, when he fought, even when he fought against the dude who spit on him, or, or the dude he spit on, I forgot, Thompson. Uh, I forget his first yeah. name. But when he fought against Thompson, a lot of people don't pay attention to stuff like this, but Thompson was outboxing Fernando Vargas before Fernando Vargas knocked him out. And you, you just got to ask yourself, if a guy like that can outbox Fernando, even if it's for a couple rounds, imagine what Floyd can do. So, but anyway, man, Excellent point. hey, but thanks for your call, man. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you go, man, so I can answer some other calls, man. Go ahead and call in anytime, yeah, all right, man? All right, appreciate Take, it, man. All right, no doubt, man. Take care, man. Okay, man, so so anyway. Yeah, man, I agree with you, man. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it would. Just to add on to that, Winky, right, he really grew out of the division and, uh, you know, he went up to middleweight, fought Jermaine Taylor, and uh, I think he got a draw or something. He lost and got a draw. Uh-huh. He fought Jermaine Taylor twice. Yeah, uh, w- uh, was it twice? I know, I know he fought Shane twice. I don't remember if he fought um, Taylor okay. twice. Yeah, and then he, he beat Trinidad. He beat. He went up. He went up and beat Trinidad. And, and yeah, yeah, he beat yeah, Trinidad. And, 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 and they don't give Winky Wright the credit he deserves, man. <laughs> Winky Wright, man, no. he should have went down as, as top 25 or something, man. I mean, he he beat – I mean, even though he, it was a smaller Shane Mosley, but he beat him. He beat Shane Mosley twice. He yeah. beat Felix Trinidad. He played with Trinidad, you know. He, and, and truth yeah, be told, yeah. truth be told – He made that look so bad for him. And, and truth be told, yeah. E. King, he was the first one to beat Fernando Vargas, but they didn't give him the decision. You know, so that Absolutely. no, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't mention it, but I did have I did have right up by a couple points. I did. Yeah, I, absolutely, man. Yeah. Hey, E King. Well, let's go ahead and take another call, man. I'm gonna take another call. We All got right. um, we got area code um four one four on the phone online. What's going on, man? What's up? I'm live. You live. You on you on the phone, man? What's up, man? Of course, I want to say shout out to Black Hayes Boxing Nation. I want to give my opinion on um, Ward Kovalev. I think that Andre Ward is not going to be able to get Kovalev to respect his puncher power. Unlike Mayweather did with Canelo, because I've seen Mayweather got Canelo and Maydana to respect his right hand, which put them into, you know, I put them into his boxing game, made them box. Mm-hmm. And I don't think Ward's going to be able to do that to Kovalev, because I've seen, I think Ward fight harder punches like Pascal. I think Pascal hit harder than Andre Ward, so I think he's going to. I think I see Kovalev taking him too. So you, you, so you picking Kovalev to take it? Yes, I think I think I think I don't think I think I think Andre Ward is going to get hit more than Floyd Mayweather would get hit going up. Like when Floyd Mayweather went to um, super welterweight, you know, Floyd Mayweather got way he liked the best. He liked the master swinger watching. You know, he's not going to get hit as much as Andre Ward going to get hit this fight. So I, I see I see I see Kovalev taking it. 
Hey, that's a, that's an interesting perspective, man. I mean, what what do you say to that, yeah. E King? Yes, because I I, I, I just and another another thing I and I wanted to get your opinion on this. I think that Bradley got bad promoters because I think that Bradley should have fought before he gave Pacquiao his rematch, unless it was like an automatic rematch clause. I think some a couple fights he should have he should have he should have tried to promote a fight with Mayweather. You know, he should he could have been another undefeated welterweight for like the you know for like the boxing you know the boxing industry. He should have been another undefeated undefeated welterweight. For Floyd Mayweather to come back for, I don't think he should have gave Pac Man that rematch due to the fact that Pac Man is old and it was too much of a risk. I think he should have built up more on the second fight. Well, you know, I, I tell Bradley you. had a lot of uh, potential after the, the Pacquiao victory, but he decided to stay with Bob Arum at that point, and um, and then he had he had a lot of problems after the Pacquiao victory, if you remember. Mm-hmm. And then he fought Provodnikov, and then. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then, yes. I, I don't know if he came from there. Marquez, but but just his decision making at that at, at those stages. If he had left Bob Arum, the sky was the limit for him. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And, and you know, and to go back to, um, to to Bradley, um, you know, I do think Bradley should have been more aggressive, calling out Floyd. Maybe he should have even pulled a Shane Mosley, jumped okay. in the ring. But you know, talking to Bradley and his former trainer Joel Diaz, man, they had tremendous, an enormous amount of respect. For Floyd Mayweather's skills. Joel Diaz, and I still have the video up on my channel, you know, he praised the shit out of Floyd Mayweather. I mean, you could clearly see yeah. that they were in awe of Floyd Mayweather, his his skill and his ability. And this goes back to my um, call from dude from New York. This is the exact point that I was making. When you talk to professional boxers and trainers that do this for a living, and you see how they praise him, they praise Floyd more than I do. So that tells you something right there. So just, you know, to kind of answer your question, yeah, Bradley, he should have been more aggressive trying to get that fight. Also, I mean, you know, Floyd Mayweather, he already retired as the best fighter of this era, but that would have been a great look. And I've said it before, if he could have, if he could have, you know, got Bradley in that little, you know, fantastic four when it comes to, you know, okay. uh, the, the Pacquiao's that he beat, the Marquez, you know, the Cotos and, and, and everyone else that he beat, I just think because all of them guys fought each other, that would have been a good look, you know, to get to see Mayweather get, versus Bradley, you know, so. I got is. one more thing. I got, to, I got to get your opinion on this now. And tell me if I'm right or wrong now. Floyd Mayweather has fought a lot of, he got, every time I see Floyd, if I know you're going to see Floyd, you might see Floyd, but I want you to let him know this. Everybody I've seen Floyd fight, even Canelo, Canelo, he has. He has speed on Canelo. He had experience on Canelo. You know, uh, everybody that's Floyd ever fought, I see him having something. Like, he fought Zab. They was pretty much an even match, but Zab ain't had no win. Now, <laughs> Floyd has to get people to... Re- it's, it's fighter that Floyd did fought that he outboxed in 12 rounds that did not respect his punching power. So it had to be a, a fighter that got more than this, like, pretty much got everything on Floyd. And the only fighter that I see beating Floyd, Mayweather, is... It's Amir Khan. Why? Because Amir, Amir Khan got the speed, he got the height, he got the reach, he got the stamina, and I don't think Floyd can get him to respect his punch power. Because I don't, I really don't see Amir Khan. He don't, he don't really respect nobody punch power. That's what he was. Why he got knocked out? Because he was, he was more when he fought Canelo. He was more based on getting there and trying to. He was trying to. He was in the pocket too much. I see him standing in the pocket with Mayweather, and I don't see Mayweather knocking him out because I don't think, I don't think that right hand gonna get him out of here. And I, I think he'll lose as well. Well, I think Mayweather. I think. No, I think. Man, I, don't all, I think if 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 no, Amir Khan, if if, if, if he can't make Amir Khan respect his power, and he don't put him to sleep, I see him losing to Amir Khan in twelve. That's the only fighter. If, if it's Keith Thurman, yeah, do I think Keith Thurman, Danny Garcia can beat Amir, Amir Khan or a heavy puncher like a, a one-two follow-up puncher? Yeah, I think they can be. I think Floyd can be anybody like that. I think. I think. Mm-hmm. I think a one-two puncher. I mean, I think a one-two any one-two puncher hard. Uh, hard hitting welterweight, hard hitting um, super welterweight, middleweight. Yeah, they can knock Amir Khan out, but mm. I don't see Amir Khan. I never seen Amir Khan lose his twelve without getting knocked out. Well, I and mean, I, 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 the, there's no. Hey, well, well, hey, well, well thanks for your call, man. I appreciate it, but I and I just say this real quick. Um, you know, when it comes to Amir Khan. There's no doubt about it. I could clearly see Amir Khan going in there, surprising people and doing way better than some people would expect, expect maybe in the first couple of rounds. But I truly believe, once again, I go back to, 
you know, Floyd Mayweather's, you know, concept, his approach, which is you bang the boxer and you box the banger. I think Floyd Mayweather would apply so much pressure on Amir Khan. He will force Amir Khan to fight on the inside. Amir Khan will be forced to hold a lot on the inside and he'll, he won't even be able to get off a lot of punches. He'll have to clinch before he can even engage because of Floyd Mayweather's intelligence. Uh, he and his... definitely clinch him up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Amir Khan. He, yeah, he didn't call my loose points because he, because he kept pushing off against uh, Lamont Peterson. Lamont yeah. Peterson yeah. <laughs> even even the Algeri yeah. fight, even the Algeri fight, he yeah. he was having problems it's with it's Algeri. It's gonna take a fighter like Amir Khan to make Floyd Mayweather fight. It's gonna he gonna bring more of a fight out there. A fighter, a fight. He gonna bring more of a fight. Well, out of Floyd Mayweather than just a heavy puncher. Well, he's gonna heavy force. Heavy not gonna make Floyd Mayweather, Mayweather fight. Well, he's he, gonna he, force. He more than just being a heavy puncher. Yeah. Well, well, what what he would do, Amir Khan, is he would force Floyd Mayweather ch- to chase him around the ring, and that would make Floyd Mayweather a lot more aggressive. But, you know, once again, when it comes to power and what you was talking about with, with Andre Ward, when you said you don't think Kovalev is going to respect um, Andre Ward's power, once again, people have to realize Floyd Mayweather moved up five weight classes, so clearly he's not the strongest puncher at welterweight. Just like Floyd Mayweather said, it doesn't matter if you're bigger than me, stronger than me, faster, taller than me. Right. I'm going to beat you and, with my and intelligence. Thing you remember, Floyd got those cat reflexes. I heard Ward he is good. He is a good boxer. He is probably the top boxer now, but he's not no Rigondeaux. He's not no Floyd Mayweather. He's going to get touched. And you got to think about this. He going to hold weight class up. And do I think Kobe will be the pound for pound best in the world if he be out there war no because I think that's about it's about a person moving up. It's um, about being pound for pound. It's about it's about it's about the smaller boxer beating the bigger boxer. It's, it's about anybody that's close to your weight class, you should be able to beat them. Anybody that's close that you can fight, you should be able to beat them. So he has to go up the he has to be at least a cruiserweight. He has to uh, unify the cruiserweight division to be the pound for pound. He can't beat Arthur yeah. Ward, somebody that I had never seen Arthur Ward fight no dominant, no super, super dominant. You know, I I don't even know who Rare is. He got a – if Andre Ward beats him, he, if he beat Kovalev, he's probably not the best, but Kovalev, no. No. Hey, well, you he know – He's being a smaller guy. Well, I, I will – He's going to try to run over him with the power. Hey, man, well, well, I will say this, man. I truly – I got to disagree with you. If Sergey Kovalev beats Andre Ward, I got him down as number one pound for pound. And for the simple fact, for the simple reason that he beat a pound for pound, you know, top five, top three fighter, just that alone, True. There's, yeah. there's nobody else – there, Roman Gonzalez, Golovkin, none of them guys have you know have beaten a top five pound for pound fighter. So if you're the first person to okay. beat Andre Ward since he was 12 years old, oh yeah, you're getting a lot of accolades. But, but any, I, hey man, I, 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 I gotta, Andre Ward, but I gotta let you go, man, so I can answer some more calls, man. Okay, okay, hey, okay. Hey, I, hey, I, hey, I, hey I hit me back. Buddy. Just call back in on the okay. next one. All right, man. All right, man. Take care, man. Okay, buddy, I call back. All right, cool. bro. All right, man. So yeah, that's that's what that is, man. Let me let me go in. What's that? What'd you say? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's Yeah, oh yeah. They hey man, people love talking boxing, man. So yeah, I'm loving it, man. But I'm gonna take another one. I'm gonna I probably take like maybe two more calls and then it's I, I got them lined up right now, man. People been on hold since the beginning of the show, man. So um, but anyway, let me take another call. Uh, we got area code another um eight three two. I'm gonna memorize all these area codes. What's going on, man? Hello. What's what's going on, man? Where you? What's your name and where hey, you calling up, from? Martin? How you doing? All right. My name is Joel. This is the first thing I want to tell you, bro. I'm a big fan of your show. I watch it every night. Appreciate and you, it. You um showing me a lot about boxing. The only I got one quick question for you. What's up? I don't understand why people. I always give Floyd Mayweather so much credit. The man stepped up in five weight classes, five division champ. <laughs> Everybody keeps talking about the man don't got punchy power, but am I tripping? Don't make Floyd Mayweather walk these fighters down? Yeah. 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 I, I mean, he, he, walked, he, he walked all these fighters down. And bigger fighters. And, and bigger fighters. Go ahead. Go yeah. Ahead. Bigger fighters. And when I watched him fall, Canelo Alvarez. That's I'm right. going to be the first to tell you, Dante. When Floyd Mayweather signed for that contract with Showtime and NBC, I just knew he was not going to fight Canelo. Well, if he was going to fight Canelo, it was going to be like second to last. This man fought this man like the third or second fight. Mm-hmm. And, second, 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 yeah. Third fight. That's about right. 
And when he got in that ring with him, did you see how small Mayweather was compared to Canelo? Yeah. Uh, I mean... And during that fight, Floyd Mayweather was walking Canelo down. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Majority of the fight. So I don't understand why people keep saying this man that got punch power. I always tell my friends, what's your definition of punch power? Mm-hmm. I mean, okay, let's just say he don't got knockout power, but I feel like he got enough power to make you respect him. Mm-hmm. There ain't too many people running up on Floyd Mayweather because if it was so easy for all these fighters to overpower him, and he wouldn't be what's the problem? He would have been beat. Yeah. And, right. I mean, and, 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 and I, I, my, I, I personally feel like this man was one of the greatest boxers or the greatest of all time, because in my era, and I'm only speaking in my era, I have never seen nobody dominate like this man. Mm-hmm. This man has dominated for years against so pound every for pound kind fighters. of fighter. Yeah, all the and and, the, and and once again, I mean, yeah, he he, he dominated, bro. Zab Zuda, and when he fought Zab Zuda, hey, anybody know about Zab Zuda history? That boy was square business. Mm-hmm. Speed. Knockout power, all that. I seen that fight, bro. Actually, to my personal opinion, Zab Zuda the only one gave Floyd Mayweather any kind of trouble, really. Yeah. To me. Yeah. The real trouble. I Everybody. Cotto, I mean. I think Cotto deserves I mean, credit. Yeah. I mean, Cotto, I mean, you could say that, but I feel like for far as speed and movement, Zab Zuda matched Mayweather in every in every bracket. Yeah, I mean it was I, like I a mirror. Well, it was, round, was like a mirror match. It, it was it was a it was a fifty fifty fight. Yeah. It was completely so even. So with, so with Miguel Cotto, I mean I don't know if y'all noticed it, but I really feel like the fight Floyd Mayweather fought Miguel Cotto. I don't think Floyd was at his best shape, bro. I ain't never seen uh, Floyd Mayweather come in winded like that, and that was the only time I seen him like that. I don't after even... that Cotto. He's smashing people, bro. I, yeah. I, I, I don't even, you know what? I, I wouldn't even make any excuses, me personally. I, I just think Cotto was really tough. And, you know, they were fighting toe to toe. You know, Floyd Mayweather was fighting them on the ropes. He was fighting them on the ropes. And, and I'm glad and, you brought that up. And Cotto was people clever. Don't give them, and he fought Cotto in a pocket. And they say he was running, yeah, right? He even when he fought him on a the pocket, yeah, they, they say still he was, say he was that running. That man wasn't running, bro. Which Every is, fight I seen him fought. Almost every single fight, he you, walked these people down. And I want to bring up one more topic before I go. I want to bring up Andre Berto. A lot of people don't know. When Floyd Mayweather fought Victor Ortiz, he was actually trying to fight Andre Berto when Andre Berto was a beast. Mm-hmm. Andre Berto ended up losing to Victor Ortiz, but nobody don't bring up that. Well, I, I, I mean, you know, the, the whole thing is, if you really, when people talk about Floyd Mayweather fighting Andre Berto as his last fight, after he already beat the quote unquote fighter of the decade, I mean, you got to really. If and you, they gave if, that shit to run around. If you yeah. believe that shit? <laughs> the fighter of, yeah, the fighter of the year. <laughs> and, then, and then she got knocked out. And then she got knocked out like a month after they gave it to her. But you already know what time and then it is. Mother, and, then her, and then her ass on interviews talking about she was contemplating by killing herself. Yeah, of course. Which I, don't hope, I wish she don't do that, but damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? All that pressure, man. You, you got people calling. You got people saying uh, you're the fighter of the decade or the fighter of the year. And all of a sudden you get knocked the fuck out like that. Yeah, man. Bro, I mean, and, this, and, and I don't get it. And like, let, let me show you how great this man is. And I'm not even a Floyd Mayweather fan, but I respect talent. And I respect Floyd because we don't got too many black fighters doing what this man doing. This man is so great. They too many really fighters, want period. this man to go up to fight uh, Golovkin. Triple G. Yeah, because... I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong, bro. Triple G, man, Triple G ain't... Think I don't of... know what's going on, but, man, he ain't really stepped up to nobody, bro. He I had mean... his chance to fight Andre Ward, brother. I mean, just, just if that man would have beat Andre Ward, yeah, I mean, and see that's that, all he needed on his resume. He had been good. And see, that's my whole thing right there. If Floyd Mayweather could jump up five weight classes, if Andre Ward, if um, Manny Pacquiao could drop jump up eight uh, classes or weight classes, why can't Gennady yeah. Golovkin jump up one or two one. weight classes one. when he's considered 
because the hardest he know that puncher. boy square business, Dante. Of course, That's of just course. what it is. Of course. And I got hey, look, I don't like I don't like uh Kovalev. Um I don't like I I don't I don't I don't honestly think he's racist. I think he's just ignorant to uh our culture, black culture and what we went through. But Hey, I ain't seen Kovalev turn down nobody, brother. For him to step up to Andre, because oh, yeah. everybody oh, yeah. is ducking that man. No doubt, no doubt. Every, it, every, everybody ducking that man. Even Andre Steve. Now he won. I really just think Stevenson. he's talking. But hey, we are gonna find out after this fight. Yeah, absolutely. But, and, and 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 let me uh, just say, uh, that, Stevenson had plenty of time to fight Kovalev, bro. Absolutely, plenty of time. Absolutely, and, and I'm, I'm just tired of I'm I'm just tired of all these haters and all these people. Man, may wasn't the right. Bro, Mayweather stepped up five way classes, and you could go back and watch every. I watched every fight of this man. I seen Mayweather walk down every single fighter. Mm-hmm. And, and you, I even set set him in the beginning of the Canelo fight. The first two rounds, he stood in this man's face. Yeah, walked to him. But see, but see, at the same time, though, you have to understand, and people don't want to, you know, compare him to Ali, but. Everything that people are saying and the way they're treating Floyd Mayweather today is the exact same way they were treating Muhammad Ali back then. See, people praise Muhammad Ali now because he's no longer a threat. He's not a threat to their right. favorite fighters anymore. So they'll use him as this crutch to basically say, oh, this has nothing to do with race or this has nothing to do with no personal agenda. Because, see, I like, I like Muhammad Ali. But if Muhammad Ali was here today, they would be hating Muhammad Ali more than they hate Floyd because Floyd, uh, Muhammad Ali, they call Floyd a runner. Muhammad Ali is known for floating like a butterfly, stinging like a bee. He moved in the ring more than Floyd Mayweather did. You know, so it's it's all hey. hypocritical, man. The, the end of the day, man, as long as the professional boxers and the media and the historians – they have Floyd Mayweather where he belongs, where he deserves to be. That's all that matters. Because ESPN, they hate Floyd Mayweather's black ass, to you know, to put it direct. They hate his right. ass, right? Right, right, but, right. But even, and, and you know the sad but part even about they, it? But hold on. But even they had to, even they had to submit, and they had to put him down as number one. Or I should say they had to concede, rather. And they had to put him down as number one as the best fighter in the last 25 years. But anyway, man, hey, but I appreciate chopping it up with you, man, and you calling in. Um, I'm going to let you go Thank so you, I can get to hey, the man, next call, man. Hey, man, I watch all your shows, brother. I stayed in, too. I stay tuned every day, man. Keep up the good work, brother. I got to go to bed anyway. I got to go to work. Thank tomorrow. you. Thank but you, man. Appreciate hey. you accepting my call, brother. No problem. Take care, man. Take care, man. For sure, for sure. So, um, E. King, yeah, that's, that's pretty much what it is, man. I mean, it, it's funny how people be like, you know, um, they don't talk about Mayweather. Don't talk about Mayweather. But you notice the majority of the calls are about Mayweather. Everybody talking about Mayweather. Conor, yeah. Conor McGregor talking about Mayweather. The fans talking about Mayweather. And he retired. You, you know what I mean? So, it, so we know we know <laughs> yeah, what it is. When he's retired, he's still the, still the biggest name. Well, yeah, of in, course. In, in, in sports. He's uh, still the biggest name in sports. Of course. Uh, absolutely. And, absolutely, yeah. man. So, yeah, man. Uh, but but anyway, um, yeah, man, I, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take one more call, man, and we're gonna go ahead and um and and wrap it up, man. Um, we got we got area code we got area code two o three in the house. What's going on, man? What's going on, Dante? It was more, man, Connecticut. Okay, what's up, man? That's what it is. What's on your mind? What's going on, man? I just wanted to make two points, man. First off, man, with uh Andre Ward, I just seen Kovalev get hit you know, by more robotic fighters. So I see Andre Ward just getting in there, touching him up. Now you see me, now you see now you see me, now you don't type of fight. I got him seven five or eight four. Mm. You you said you got you got Ward seven five, eight four? Seven five or eight four, even though I could see him in the mid rounds getting touched one time, but I see him responding well to it. Yeah, hey, I, that's yeah. a that's that's a good prediction. I mean I I, I pretty much see it. Yeah, I pretty much see it that way. I see the first four rounds being, you know, a serious competitive chess match. And then, once again, you know, once that blueprint prints out, you know what I'm saying, that's when I see Andre Ward kind of taking over. I see Andre Ward getting a little comfortable on the inside, starting to smother Kovalev. I see Kovalev for the first time looking uncomfortable, you know, dealing with exactly. that dealing with that inside game. 
Go ahead. That, that's what I want to know. I, I mean, you just hear, you know, what, how's Andre going to respond to his power? What's Andre going to do? How's Kovalev going to respond to somebody that's moving well, that's getting inside, touching you, getting out, coming in, smothering you? How's Kovalev going to respond to adversity? Because you haven't really seen him taking it to deep exactly. water. And Chalimba was touching him, you know, at, at, sort of at will at times in that fight. And I'm like, oh, my God, I can see Andre just touching him all night. Mm-hmm. Um, now, the last point, I won't hold you too long. A uh, fantasy fight that I always need to see was a, a better train, more disciplined Paul Williams versus uh, Mayweather. Yeah, that hey, that would have hey, been. I got Mayweather. Yeah, I, I, got Mayweather I, mean, I, I don't see him beating Mayweather, but I see the fight being interesting because, you know, I don't see Paul, I don't see Mayweather really hurting Paul, and Paul throwing that hundred round, I mean, hundred punches around, and you know, being that workhorse, man, I said that would be an interesting fight. No, no doubt about it. It would definitely be an interesting fight, and that would have been Floyd May, one of Floyd Mayweather's toughest fights. I think um, the downfall for Paul Williams in that fight would be mm-hmm. because he's such a volume puncher. And he didn't have the greatest defense. He would leave himself yeah, open, yeah. you know, while he's throwing a lot of them punches. Um, you know, we've seen, you know, as his um career progressed, we've seen Paul Williams start to get hit a lot more. You know, he started to look almost somewhat like a Diego Corrales. I'm not saying their style was similar. Hey, exactly. Yeah, you, you took the one out of my mouth. I, that's why I said a better train. I figure. I always seen him because I was a big Paul fan. I said, man, if he could get in the hands of a better trainer, oh my God, he'd be special. Mm-hmm. But uh. Yeah, man, that's, that's my thoughts with that one, man. And um, I don't see him really beating May, but I see him pushing Mayweather, you know, a little bit with his size and, you know what I mean, his body and punch. But I still see May somehow pulling it out. And Paul had a tendency to fight short at times, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, hey, man, but thanks for your call, man. I appreciate it, man. And uh, you take care, yeah, all right? Okay. All right, man. Take care, man. All right. So, yeah. And, and, and shouts out to my man Curtis Stevens, man. Um, Curtis Stevens, he's fighting on the undercard against James De La Rosa. You know, I, I just really uh-huh. like, I like, you know, the drive. I like uh, Curtis. You know, he's been confident. He got a vicious, real vicious knockout against an undefeated prospect, I think, in his very last fight. I don't know if it was his last fight or not. But um, Curtis is looking good right now, man. And then shout out to Clarissa Shields as well. She's making her debut on the undercard. Right, so. Yeah, man. So it'll be interesting. But um, last thing I want to talk about, E. King, and then we'll go and wrap it up, man. Um, Conor McGregor, um, like I said, everybody talking about or Conor McGregor, uh, Floyd Mayweather responded to him and he said, you know, I'm the biggest name in MMA. I mean, it's crazy because when you think about it, Floyd Mayweather makes a valid point because it's funny when you look at it the other way around, you don't ever hear any boxers talking about MMA fighters, right? But when it comes to the whole, <laughs> when it comes to MMA, right. they all talk about Floyd Mayweather. It's almost like an admission that they even believe that the sport of boxing or Floyd Mayweather is much bigger than than um, the UFC. I mean, is that kind of how you see it, or what? Even even before Conor McGregor uh, had gained the stardom, uh, Ronda Rousey was basically UFC's number one star, and she couldn't shut up about Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You know? And, uh-huh. and, and, and Conor McGregor is just, he's just following suit, you know, trying to market his name and connect connect with, with other big names. And uh, it's paying off for him because he, he's got his name attached to Mayweather mm-hmm. uh, by by basically the generic mainstream media that, that you know, wants to hype up a fight that will probably never happen. Yeah. Uh, even though Floyd actually offered... He, he put the money on the table for McGregor to try and take it, but yeah. you know, McGregor, I'm sure he was under contract and, and he couldn't get approval for that kind of a yeah. matchup yeah. In, in a boxing match. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But you know what? S- something. Conor McGregor is extremely marketable at this stage. And oh, you can absolutely. say whatever the fuck you want. Abs- and if he keeps winning, uh, you know, he's going to make a lot of money for UFC. And, he's uh, all- <laughs> he said for UFC. Take, yeah. But I'm sure. And you sure, know. Floyd Mayweather offered him. He offered him $50 million. Career. Yeah, he offered him $50 million. Yeah. And you know how much Connor just and, made and against. He didn't want it, so. And you know how much Connor just made against Alvarez? He made four. I don't know. He made $4 million against Alvarez. You know, so at least that's the word on the street. So even if that's true, wow. you turn down $50 million 
and you make four million, which is big for UFC. That's huge because before Conor, you know, uh, credit to Conor McGregor because before he came along, UFC fighters they was making a quarter of a million dollars, and that was like for that's the right. biggest. That was like for the I'm biggest well, names I'm in the back. sport. What's yeah, that? That's a, that? That's a lot. That's a lot for a UFC guy. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. That's the biggest number I've heard. Yeah, but see, and this is and this is once again the 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 funny ironic double standards is because when you basically think about it, you remember when um, when Connor and Ronda Rousey and everybody, the media was talking about these, you know, these fighters, they want to fight Floyd. They want to fight Floyd, and Floyd is scared and all this kind of stuff. You've seen articles yeah. after articles. Everybody was bashing Floyd that these people, they want to fight him, right? But as soon as Floyd Mayweather says, I'll fight Conor McGregor, you know, in a boxing match, okay. now all of a sudden them same people saying, oh, look at Floyd trying to cherry pick. Look at him trying to cherry pick and fight, you know, Conor McGregor and all this kind of stuff. You see how this shit works? That's kind of that's kind of the same thing they did with Manny Pacquiao. When Manny Pacquiao, everybody said that Floyd was scared of Manny Pacquiao. As soon as Floyd signed the contract, now all of a sudden they said he cherry picking Manny Pacquiao, you know. So we already pretty much know what it is, man. But um, but anyway, man. Yeah, man. Floyd, Floyd did his thing. I I I gotta shut up. You know, right now we're heading into the new generation of boxing where Floyd Mayweather, I don't know if he's coming back, I don't know what his plans are, but, you know, right now it's, it's the welterweight division, it's so hot, and we got guys like Keith Thurman, Danny Garcia, they're going to mix it up, Sean Porter might get the winner of that fight, that's going to be totally awesome going into next year, and, you know, we got to look forward to, to, to the new champion crown. Uh, in the welterweight division, because that is a mighty division, and and who knows if Mayweather could come back? Who knows? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Well, we'll see, man. Hey, man. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up. Um, I want to say thanks for my man, E. King Fight News. Go ahead and subscribe to his channel. He'll be back on the show. Thanks for everybody that called in. We're gonna be doing a live show every week. Uh, eventually, I'm gonna be doing about two shows a week. We'll probably do a non-live one. And then we'll do a live one as well. So once again, thanks for everybody calling in. We're going to go ahead and wrap it up. We on to the next one, y'all. It's the nation, baby. All right. All right. Fire.